Hey, what is up my friends? Today we are going to be building a Legend of Zelda Wind Waker model and uh, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, we'll make sure everything's working here. Hope everybody's having a beautiful Friday morning, at least where I am it's morning, maybe it's afternoon where you are, likely. Uh, today we are, ex well I'm excited to uh, interact with some people, have a little chat, uh, put the finishing touches on this model. I've actually, let's see what we got going on here. I've actually done some prototyping and framing and uh, I'll show you what I've done so far uh, in terms of that. Who do we have in the chat? What is going on, everybody? Okay, we have Enthusiastic Banana here. That's awesome, great to see you. Thanks for joining. Without the mods, this would turn into a gong show, I'm sure. Really appreciate it. Uh, okay, let's go. Hey, everybody. Hope everybody's having a good day. I see some familiar names. That's awesome. And uh, some history on this model. We'll start with kind of like why I'm building this and where it came from. This was not uh, it's not my idea uh, to build this model originally. I'll pop up a video here. So this video actually made the rounds three years ago, over three years ago. I think it was in February 2019. It kind of like uh, blew up on the internet um, or at least kind of went viral. I saw it on Reddit. Uh, it was very popular. And uh, there's actually very little information about this model. I tried to go back and find the original post. It was from uh, a Chinese blogger. And it's since gone. They just don't show posts older than two years. So I don't actually have any other information about who built it or what's become of it or anything like that. But obviously it is a, well, maybe not obviously, but it is a wooden model. And the artist was extremely talented. Uh, they clearly added a lot of detail to this. And uh, it is hand cranked. There's a crank. You can just barely see it on the bottom right. I cropped the video a little bit. Um, and through a bunch of axles and gears and such, uh, we get this nice wave motion on the surface. And obviously the boat rocks and Link is in it. And the seagulls go up and down. And actually, what's one super cool thing about this model is that the seagulls flap their wings when they get to the bottom. And uh, it's like really such a, an amazing detail that... Uh, yeah, it just blew me away when I saw this model and I knew I had to try and recreate it at least a little bit in Lego. The flapping of the seagull's wings is uh, kind of next level and at the scale that I'm building this at, that is not going to happen. Uh, I think you'd need a, a bit of a larger scale or to introduce some non-Lego components to kind of get that to work. Um, but uh, it is probably one of the coolest features of this model, which is a shame that we won't be able to reproduce it. But you know, such is life. Sometimes you got to make sacrifices when you're building things with Lego. Okay, who else is... I see this chat's been uh, going on. We've got some uh, other people in here. Slash me, Tricks and Bricks. Hey ho. That's awesome. Great to see you guys in here again. Thanks for modding as usual. Uh, we see a bunch of hellos. Hello from everywhere. Hello from France. I love Wind Waker. Yeah, it's a pretty cool game. It's actually a pretty old game by today's standards. It's funny looking at old footage from it, which I was kind of uh, taking a glance at when I was, you know, working on this. And uh, it's uh, interesting to see how the graphics look. It's still pretty charming, but uh, definitely is a bit dated. Uh, okay, so as far as... What's going on today? Um, as I said, I have uh, done some framing. I've got the I've got the base all framed out. I've done some prototyping over the last couple months. Um, actually, I started. I originally started working on this like three years ago um, when I first saw it, and I built a prototype kind of wave generator uh, all the way back then, and it's kind of been sitting on my build table for the last three years. And uh, a couple months ago, I finally uh, resurrected this project to try and finish it off. And I've actually been teasing out some of the features of it over the last month or so. Uh, what do we got going on here? Like this uh, spiral cam I made, I made a little short for it. 
which turned out to be pretty popular. Uh, and uh, yeah, clearly I kind of made a little short for that, posted on Instagram and Twitter and such, uh, which is pretty cool. Also, oh, that's the original video. Actually, I don't have any of other stuff. I also built a, uh, I built a little seagull cam thing, which I also posted as a short, just to kind of show, I already have some little cute little seagulls built. I'm not sure if I'll go with this design in the end. I think so, but, uh, and a little cam system to lift them up and push them down. And obviously this inspired an entire video uh, about cam profiles, which you may have watched, which I posted a few weeks ago. Um, but I have that system set up. So I've been doing a lot of work uh, on this model. And today we are going to do the final assembly on it. So we're gonna put it all together and we're gonna see what it looks like and how it goes. Oh, Tricks and Bricks, I actually built that seagull mechanism earlier today. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's cool. Uh, da -da -da -da. Yeah, do more shorts. It will go boom. Yeah, the shorts have been crazy. Um, YouTube is definitely pushing shorts. I've got like millions of views on my shorts, even though I haven't posted a ton of them. But uh, I think it's uh, <laughs> the mug. The mug is back. The I think short format, actually, most of the videos I make... I think would do pretty well in the shorts format because most people just want to see, you know, a snippet of, of models working. Obviously, there's a few people interested in, you know, diving in uh, more deep to how the models work. And for those people, I do make those longer videos. But most people just want to make or just want to see kind of the models in action or how or, uh, you know, snippets of the mechanisms and stuff. So uh, I'm, I'm really liking the short format. So I'll probably post more. Oh, the other day I saw a video of a beachside with lighthouse and everything. Yeah, KDR. That's from Grant. Grant, my partner in crime in the pop-up pop up book. Grant Davis built that. He also built that Waves uh, Washing the Shore video, which was really awesome. Uh, YouTube wants to be TikTok, and their shorts and TikTok wants to be YouTube with their longer videos. Tricks and breaks, yeah. Everybody wants to be everybody else. Ast actual Instagram Reels is also popping off in terms of like a TikTok clone. Uh, uh, did you think of Titus push latch mechanism ass in the former stream? Kin scenarios. You know what? I forgot about that, but today I got a piece of paper and a pen <laughs> so I can write all this stuff down <laughs> because people suggest things. Here's my fancy Lego notebook. This is where I do things. Do I have anything interesting in here? I think, uh, oh yeah, here's a, uh, this is dimensions of an average human being. So when I make figures, I know how long to make all the limbs and stuff. Okay. I got to write this, uh, oh man, uh, Titus push mechanism. Watch as I write things on a piece of paper, the most riveting stream ever. That way I won't forget. I'm old, so my memory's not as good as it used to be. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> okay, so what is going on here? Let us... Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so the first thing we are going to do... Uh, I love that you have a Lego book, yes. Uh, we actually put the spiral cam back together because I kind of took it apart. Um, so basically this is my layout of my, of my model. This is the frame. I'm going to have the spiral cam going across the front here. The waves will be hinged on the back. And then I have two slots. I'm going to have two seagulls, uh, to go up and down and the boat's going to sit kind of in between them. Uh, and then we'll... So, and then we'll see what happens. So I kind of have a drive mechanism going on already. This is the first 
or the back seagull cam. And if I take one of these seagull dudes, he can slot in this slot right here. And then that cam will push it up and down. Sometimes you gotta make sure. Okay, so yeah, push them up and down like so. Uh, but step number one is we need to mount the spiral cam on here. So first I have to build the spiral cam. Uh, so we are basically just gonna stack a bunch of wheels on it and we're gonna offset those wheels by 30 degrees uh, from each other. And uh, yeah, so we can get some nice little offset wave generation action going. <laughs> some nice discussion in the chat, guys. Awesome. Uh, how long have you been doing Lego Bean Blackfoot? 20-ish years, 20 plus years. Okay, I actually have to make sure I remember how to build this thing. I do have some reference. Uh, uh, which, uh, da, 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 da. I just gotta make sure I get the spacing right. Okay, so we're gonna start with a drive gear. This 24 tooth gear is what's gonna actually drive this uh, thing. Uh, you could add a feather piece for the seagull tail. Yes, I could. Yeah, when we get to final, well, the seagulls will probably be one of the last things to add, so. Uh, Keep that in mind, and uh, maybe we'll see what we can do about it. Okay, so I'm gonna mount these spiral these uh, wheels on just because. Well, one big reason is because they have a hexagonal arrangement of uh, Technic pinholes in them, so we can mount them in all sorts of different ways uh, to get different orientations. And to mount them, I'm gonna stick a friction pin in one of the holes and one of these two long lift arms with an axle hole. So for example, in this orientation, I have the axle hole in the center aligned with the center hole of the wheel. And we are just going to uh, stick that in there. So oh, slide it all the way to the bottom. So I would consider this like 12 o'clock. Let's say that's the top. So we're gonna offset the, each sequential uh, wheel by 30 degrees. Doesn't the axle that long bend and break? Well, I mean, it does bend, yeah. But there's not gonna be a lot of force, lateral force on it, so uh, I think it should be okay. Uh, the model waves aren't actually that heavy, so it shouldn't bow too much. Malik Gupta, what's that long white axle? So this is a 32 stud long axle. Lego has made them at various times in the past. They're actually currently in production in sand green, I believe, in the typewriter. And I think they might be in production in black as well right now. Uh, but uh, yeah, 32 long. Okay, and I'm gonna space these wheels by a half stud each. I actually did some prototypes with the waves kind of right up against each other, but they kind of interfere a little bit just because of the tolerances of Lego. Okay, so the next one, uh, the next wheel that goes on, which way am I gonna do it? I'm going to, I'm actually gonna slide it into one of the outside holes. And in order to get it offset, we are going to see if I get this right. I might not. We're going to go like so. No, not like so. Yeah, maybe like so. Oh man, these are hard to put on. Uh, do you try pulley wheels to make the waves thinner? Yes, actually you could use pulley wheels. Um, yeah, uh, you kind of, the thing is you need two studs worth, even with the pulley wheels, you need some way to mount them on the axle as well. 
So they end up taking up two studs worth of space uh, anyway, pretty much. I mean, you could probably do it with one and a half, but then the shortest like axle pin options are two studs long. So it's essentially going to take up two studs worth of horizontal space anyway. So, uh, so it doesn't really save you anything. Um, so that's one reason why I didn't bother with the pulley wheels. Okay, anyway, uh, this should be good. And then uh, we'll do another spacer. Can you dab at the end of the stream? I don't know, isn't that like obsolete? Who dabs anymore? I mean, come on. And then what are we going to do? The next one, so, so riveting. We're going to go 90 degrees. Oh, actually, I need a wheel first. I don't think I quite got the first one right. Oh yeah, it's because I got it backwards. Uh, you're gonna submit to Lego Ideas. Zello projects tend to do well. Yeah, I mean, sure it'll do well, but uh, unfortunately, it probably will never get approved. So no, I'm not gonna submit it to Ideas. I will make instructions for it. I might sell the instructions for it just to kind of make up for some of the time I put into it. Uh, but yeah, we'll not be going on to leg ideas. <laughs> I, the dab is never dead. Well, some people might disagree with you on that one, but, uh, <gasps> okay. And next one. I've got my spacers. Uh, Allegrispa, shame Lego has been working with Nintendo for two to three years and no, still no sign of Zelda. Yeah. Yeah, or a Mario minifig, as you mentioned. It uh, It is a shame. I'm sure there's huge demand for minifig versions of those characters. Uh, okay, we have four cams, and you can see it's kind of coming together a little bit. We'll get a little spiral action. I don't know why I keep wanting to put those on first. Uh, Uh, how old is the Lego Mario thing? Lego Mario thing, I'm not sure what you're referencing. I mean, Lego has been producing Mario thing, uh, sets for a, a few years now. Granted, they're not quite what people want of the Mario sets, but uh, I mean, some people like them. I haven't bought any of them, to be honest. Um, just don't really appeal to me. Can you spin a fidget? At the end of the video, man, you're really bringing back all the uh, obsolete tropes. Uh, do you have a collection of your broken bricks? Carl Johnson, yeah, that's a great question. I actually threw out most of them. I do have some though, actually, I think they're right here. These are all broken. There is a lot of brown in this actually. A lot of brown, as you can tell. Even some broken axles. Broken gears, I mean, I think actually I broke a dark red piece building the boat for this already. Um, but yeah, I mean, it happens. Especially, uh, well, obviously dark brown or reddish brown and uh, 
and uh, dark red are susceptible to breakage, which is a shame. Uh, but even Technic components, I sometimes break them. When you're running Technic models for a long time, it's uh, almost inevitable that some of them break some uh, pins and stuff and lift arms. Uh, is the underlying mechanism going to be similar to the ones of the Sand Beast sculpture? Jose, no. No, actually, the this spiral cam is pretty much exactly the same as the one I had in Falcor, the Luck Dragon model from a couple years ago. Um, and in that one, I did use pulley wheels to do the mechanism. Uh, da -da -da -da. Okay, we are we're cooking now. Now that I actually know what I'm doing. Uh, I did two streams ago, yeah. Da, da, da. I had some eight-year-old Lego and it just breaks if we touch it. Malik Gupta, yeah. I mean, there's definitely a period of time, there's an era of Lego pieces, especially reddish-brown ones that they just do not, uh, they do not hold up well. In theory, Lego have fixed all those issues now, so any new parts uh, are better, but that doesn't solve the problem of all those like billions of pieces that are out in the world uh, that are broken. Okay, last one here. Uh, which way does this get oriented that way? Uh, the Gundolf. Hello, I guess you don't mail Lego for compensation about those broken Lego pieces. No, it's not worth it. I mean, it breaks so many pieces. Like, I would be on the phone with customer support, like, every day. It's just not worth it. It is super annoying though, like really annoying when it happens. Okay, and then we have a uh, another gear at the end. Okay, so here's my spiral cam. So if we take a little look-see head on, we get a nice little spiral action. Hopefully I built that right. And uh, now we can mount it. So as I said, the waves go in the front. And we have this gear here, this large gear, to basically we're going to drive the spiral cam by hand, by hand crank here. And then this gear will transfer that rotation down to the drivetrain, which will drive all of the, uh, drive the two seagulls. Uh, oh yeah, Bionicle fans will understand the pain of crackling lime green sockets, yeah. Okay, here we go. We got a spiral cam and uh, actually I need a crank for this. So we're gonna drive that 24 tooth gear with a tooth gear underneath, basically. And we'll stick a crank on the end of that on the outside. So we have a crank, we have a gear, we can drive, so now we can drive the spiral. I actually stuck a extra gear on the drivetrain here because I'll probably stick a motor in here at some point today to get it to just run on its own. Uh, so we need a gear for that. So I thought I'd just add it, hopefully that'll be suitable. Uh, do you like the TV mechanism on the Nintendo Entertainment set? Yeah, it's pretty cool. I haven't bought the set, but I looked through the instructions. It's something I often do because the sets are too expensive. Uh, but I will, I, I do occasionally flip through the instructions to see how everything's put together because it's a great way to learn how things work. Uh, yeah, and it's pretty awesome. Uh, why do you keep the broken pieces? Ruta Moon Dude, Hamburg. Well, because uh, it came in handy. I figured, I used to just throw them out, but then uh, 
every once in a while people ask about like broken pieces <laughs> and there's some discussion on reddit and stuff so every once in a while so it's actually handy to have some on hand to like show people that it happens uh can you just connect the plates to the front and back and make two wave things in the middle you could but that sounds a little more complicated i'd rather just have uh we'll just anchor the waves at the back and have them wave in the front and uh it's much simpler uh could you tell me where you buy your lego spare pieces mostly i buy them on bricklink actually i used to order from bricks and pieces quite a bit but they kind of nerfed it uh with the latest update you can't get like newer pieces anymore which really sucks uh so that's kind of annoying uh so mostly bricklink Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, uh, okay, so we have our spiral cam. It is spiraling. So basically, I have a ton of waves over here. These are my these are my plates for the waves. So they're basically just going to be hinged at the back here, and the spiral cam will lift them up to the front. So I already built the hinging uh, axle, I guess. So again, this is just another 32 long axle. This one just happens to be black, just because that's the one I pulled out. And we're basically just using these Technic plates with holes in them to, uh, and this one does need support because it will be holding up the boat. So I have a couple of uh, basically plates with holes here to add support which will mount in the middle so it's supported here here and then at the ends we'll add another couple Technic bricks for support as well so now these all just hinge loosely so if I stick a if I stick one of these wave plates on it Basically, the back can hinge and the front can be pushed up by the spiral cam or by one section of the spiral cam. The waves should be dark blue. Well, yeah, maybe. Uh, sadly, I don't have that many dark blue plates. Since I'm making instructions for this, I wanted it to be like uh, easily buildable by other people. So I think to build it in dark blue would probably be... Uh, a little more expensive. Rosh, TLG promised the new pieces will be available with about three month delay. They're just overburdened from the merger. Yeah, I mean, sure. I would guess, you know, what they say and what the reasons behind it might be two completely different things. But uh, we'll see, it'd be cool if they were more available. But it actually disincentivizes people from buying sets. I mean, I would never buy a new set if all the new pieces are available right away. Uh, because really I'm interested in in parts primarily. Alex Klua, which application do you use to create instructions? I mostly use, uh, well, to design the models in 3D, I use uh, Studio, actually. I find Studio really nice. I use it a lot, but I still use the LDRAW tools to actually generate my instructions. And as a software developer, I actually wrote a bunch of custom scripts and stuff to, to help do that. So it's just kind of like a hodgepodge of tools. Do you build your prototypes multicolored and order the color matching parts later? Uh, yeah, great question. R Hamburg. Uh, I actually try and build them in the colors I want as I go, but obviously I can't always do that because I don't have all the right colors at any given time. So yeah, I often do I try and build them in the colors I want to build them in, but uh, yeah, I'll just use whatever colors I have on hand to do it. Uh, and uh, okay, so we'll get a few. I actually have uh, this barrel. In the game, uh, you have to like jump over barrels and stuff that are floating in the water uh, and collect uh, 
I don't know what they are, gems or something, whatever, collect things. So I thought I'd stick a barrel at the end. We'll see how it looks. Uh, I have a nice little faceted barrel. In the actual game, it's pretty, it's not very round because it is uh, from many years ago. So it's got a very polygonal uh, look to it. So the barrels, I thought this worked out pretty nice to make a, it almost looks like an old school rendered barrel. Uh, why do you need gaps between the waves? Yes, that's a great question. I actually originally did it without the gaps between the waves. But uh, they end up, like it's really hard to get the waves. Well, there's two reasons. One is that it's really hard to get the waves to not interfere with each other. Because the Lego is still, it's still just a toy. The tolerances are quite good, but there's still, you know, little lips and stuff on the edges of some plates. So if they're butting up right beside each other, they too tend to, you know, get hung up on the waves beside them. So it just doesn't run as smoothly. The other reason is because I have gaps, it actually works well for, uh, you know, having the seagulls. I already have some built-in gaps for the seagulls. Obviously, if they were, if I put them right against each other, I could just make spaces for the seagulls in certain waves. But the fact that I have the gaps already means that I can easily stick the seagulls in those gaps, which is cool. Uh, great question. We need a Lego CAD tool where the gears mesh and can be animated. Uh, there's no tool at the moment, Rosh, yeah. I mean, that'd be awesome. There was a guy that made one, what's it called, SR 3D Builder or something. Uh, it was amazing. He actually had all that capability in it, but sadly he passed away many years ago. And he was working on that project exclusively by himself. So, uh, yeah, it kind of just died, but uh, it was amazing. It had all kinds of great... Uh, uh, tools for like putting Technic models together and getting them to work. Alexander McDonald, what languages are you using in software development? Whichever ones I need to. Uh, lately I've been doing a lot of Python, C Sharp, since uh, they're pretty easy rapid prototyping uh, languages. Uh, but uh, in the past done a lot of C++ and C. Uh, okay, okay, so, okay, so we have a barrel, which I think is kind of cool, but because the barrel is actually wider than the wave, the waves beside it needs to have a little cutout to accommodate. Uh, so the waves are actually extremely simple. They're just three two by eight plates and they're connected with some two by four plates underneath. Okay, so now we have a little wave mechanism. Obviously, this is pretty much what I showed in my little shorts previews, which is pretty cool, but we need to decorate this. So obviously, in the, in the game, I think I have an image here uh, somewhere. Well, that's Link. Okay, so here's the wave. And actually, it is pretty much light blue. I don't know if uh, Queenie suggested dark blue, but actually I think light or regular blue is a uh, more appropriate color for them. Uh, da -da -da, Python is a great language. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, anyway, we have all these white streaks kind of uh, throughout the waves to indicate, I guess, little where the waves break or what have you, just add texture. So I'm gonna add those to this. Uh, we'll see if we can get something to look good. Actually, I'm gonna take them off while I do that. So let's just take them off in order because it'll be easier to, well, I guess it doesn't really matter what the order is now because they're all the same. But uh, I'm also gonna have waves uh, I guess I'm gonna have a non, no, actually, I think I, I'm gonna put some sides on this. Some sides. And I'm gonna actually mount uh, just some static 
water on the sides as well. So yeah, but for now, actually, again, I'll take those off. Actually, I don't know. Anyway, uh, okay, so I can hear the background music when traveling in the sea in my head, Philip Baudouin. Yeah, I feel ya. Um, well, like Gupta, the very emotion, the wave emotion reminds me of the modifications you made to Lego Dragon Dance, right? Where you increased the cycles by using eight tooth gear. Yeah, and uh, yes, very similar. And actually, the Luck Dragon, as I mentioned, the Luck Dragon set I made. It's uh, yeah, it's upstairs, so I can't show it to you. But the Luck Dragon set I designed actually uses the exact same technique. Okay, so actually, I'm just gonna set this aside for a second. And we are going to, I got a whole bunch of white tiles. So we are going to try and make this look like, and I actually have, I kind of tried to sketch this out a little bit. Sadly, I don't have a picture I can share, but anyway, it's gonna, well, it's hopefully going to look somewhat like this. So uh, yeah. So we're just gonna start uh, laying down tiles. Uh... <laughs> Will Morton, do you have any advice to prevent fingernail damage while building Lego? Yes, well, I try and keep my fingernails short um, and then use a brick safe separator whenever you can. Don't use your fingernails. Uh, but yeah, sometimes it's inevitable. Are you going to cover the size of the model? No, I don't think so. I think part of the I don't know. I like seeing how things work, so I like to I like to leave them open a little bit. So I'm not going to decorate the side, I don't think, or decorate the base. Really, I want the focus to be on the stuff that's on the top, so I'll probably just leave it open. Dragon Shadow. The white, I think, is supposed to represent the sun reflecting off the waves. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's a great theory, yeah. Uh, could be. Okay, we're gonna make some lines here. Hello, I don't know if this question has been asked from Rain before. Did you play Breath of the Wild? No, uh, I have not played it. I would like to actually, but uh, it's only available on the Switch, right? I don't have a Switch, so. I mean, it looks amazing. I have definitely, uh, I've actually watched the gameplay footage of it, but uh, I have not played it myself, sadly. Uh, which uh, I think is a shame. Okay, we're gonna add some, uh, there's some little holes and stuff in the, no, no, that's not the right. In some of the joints where the, where the lines come together. So I'm gonna try and replicate Replicate that a little bit and I'm just using a combination of uh, like quarter round tiles uh, Some of these wedge plates regular tiles and uh, These small quarter round tiles as well As a cornfield use randomly place two by two macaroni tiles as the reflection because it will make it look more like the Sun is reflecting on the waves uh, Yeah, could be but uh, I'm gonna try and go with the lines, kind of the way they have it in the in the game, just to try and mimic how it looks. So we're just gonna make some lines, some kind of like wavy lines. So like this line here coming will be like with some curves in them, and uh, yeah, get some lines to another like joint. I noticed they do vary in size a little bit, which is what the wedge plates kind of help with. And then we'll put another little like curve potty thing here or a little hole where they join. Uh, you can play on the Wii U being Blackfoot. Oh yeah. Don't have one of those either though. I used to have a Wii. I had one of the original Wiis, uh, 
back in the day, but uh, obviously it's pretty old now. And I sold it. Uh, so that doesn't help me at all. Uh, no, actually, I think I did that kind of not the way I wanted, but... Uh, Yeah, actually, I'm going to move all these down a little bit. It's a bit too close to the front edge. Uh, you could also emulate Breath of the Wild easily. Uh, oh, emulate it, yeah. I do have a decent computer. I mean, it's not a uh, gaming powerhouse by any means. But it's got like an RTX 2060 in it. As far as graphics card. Um... And it's only a couple years old. I guess it is. Actually, I guess that's already getting pretty dated. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I built it a couple years ago. So it's got some reasonably modern components in it. Being Gabriel Marshall. Marshall being Canadian, are you aware of the great Stan Rogers? Uh, doesn't ring a bell immediately, but... Probably Queenie, will it work well? Uh, I'm not sure what you're referring to, but uh... <laughs> Mr. Brongles, not a gaming powerhouse. Yeah, well, I mean, you see all this talk of like RTX 3090s all over the place and uh, TIs. So yeah, obviously it's a pretty decent gaming setup. Um... I emulate with GTX 650 Ti. Well, yeah. I mean, that's awesome that that uh, still works. I mean, I think the Ti adds a lot. Uh, enthusiastic banana, you need at least a 390, 3090 Ti if you're gonna emulate Nintendo game. <laughs> at least, yeah, I should uh, get right on that. Uh, you should try making one of the Horizon Zero Mechanical Animals as a motion sculpture. The Game Dude 102, yeah. Actually, I was really intrigued with the... Uh, yeah, with the Horizon Zero Dawn Lego set that came out. But uh, I was incredibly disappointed that uh, the joints on the Lego one are not articulated in any way whatsoever. Uh, they don't even... Like, they're just completely rigid. So, there's no opportunity, really, to make them move, sadly. I mean, obviously, it could be done by, you know, completely redesigning it, but... Uh, but, uh, yeah. I've thought about it, for sure. It is, uh, I mean, those uh, machines are, or animals, I don't even know what they are. I guess they're machines, are pretty awesome. Uh, do you collect your models? Brick, shark, Lego. <laughs> oh, what do you mean by that? The stuff I build? Uh... Da, 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 da. Can you say Nintendo 64? Oh, yeah. Well, that's a pretty good console, too. Hey, uh, Bowie Mine. Hey, I'm new in the chat. How's it all going? It's going great. Uh, I'm building wavy. I'm building waves. Decorated waves. Uh, yeah, so it's coming along. It looks pretty nice, I think. Uh, so, yeah, we'll just uh, keep going. We're getting there. Making some lines on my waves to make it look like the game. Making waves. That's what it's all about. Just make some lines. Uh, Downloading that free RAM wasn't working. Oh my god, you can't joke about stuff like that because people take you seriously. Uh... 
Uh, are you working on the other weird walking robot thing, Joseph Miser? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. Do you mean the crazy flip walker I made? I mean, that's pretty much done because uh, I made a video for it and everything. Although I haven't released the instructions for it yet. I'll probably do that at some point. Um, I just haven't... Uh, actually, the instructions are done, but... Uh, uh, yeah, uh, but I still have to release them. Uh, Mr. Boris. Hi, Jason. How is your day going so far? It's going great. It's a beautiful day. I have some tea in my hand. I'm building some Lego, so that's always a plus. Oh, Joseph Miser, the AT, AT version, yeah. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't worked on it much at all, but uh, I still just have the frame. Uh, I'm actually not really that motivated to finish it because I've already like made the flip walker, that's all I care about. Um, uh, uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, so I mean it might eventually get done. We'll see I Have a bunch of other stuff to work on though uh, Kyler Kirby, what do you think of the clockwork solar system on Lego ideas? I really hope it gets approved. Yeah, I mean It's pretty awesome. There's been a number of solar systems on uh, Ideas over the years uh, yeah, like which, like which one? There's like so many of them. I guess the one by Brent, uh, yeah, it looks amazing, but I think it will, there's no chance it'll get approved because it's way too complicated, but, uh, you know, could happen. I already built my own, so it doesn't really interest me that much. Okay. Now we just gotta, I'm just gonna make a line connecting these two. And, uh... Oh, Thomas Sanjurjo. Sorry if I missed this, but how are you gonna pass the stands for the seagulls through the waves? Yeah. As we mentioned earlier, the waves are not going to be right beside each other. There's gonna be a gap between them just to make everything run smoother. And as a result, I'll be able to put the stands of the seagulls through those gaps, which in my testing worked quite well. So hopefully that uh, will continue to be the case in the finished model. Okay, just making a little connecting line. Have you yourself played Wind Waker before? I have not actually. Uh, I have watched a lot of footage of it though <laughs> in researching this model. Uh, it looks really awesome. I actually should sit down and play it at some point. Um, yeah, but no, sadly I've not. Okay, and then we're gonna have another, uh, I think we'll do one more wave at the end here. This will be the one on the stand, so it'll just be static, but uh, it needs some decoration as well. I'm gonna finish up this last little little pod thing. We'll just close it off and then, uh, yeah. And then I think, uh, yeah, I think that looks pretty good. If we compare it to, as I jump around here, here's my original uh, reference material. And uh, there it is, yeah. So yeah, I think that looks pretty nice. So we're gonna add these on. Uh, have you made Link yet? I've I've kind of been playing around with things for Link. Yeah, we'll get to that uh, in a second. Uh, uh, how long have you been building Lego, Joseph Miser? Yeah, yeah. People ask me that a lot, and I always answer it the same. Apparently, it doesn't change. Changes by one day, every day I answer the question. Um, uh, but yeah, as an adult for over 20 years. Uh, yeah, so a long time. Uh, what's the beige gray? Okay, so this is a barrel. Apparently in the game you gotta jump over barrels. Uh, oh, Jules Brick City, one point 
nine nine euro super chat that's awesome cool or super sticker i guess that's what that is cool man thanks uh really appreciate it uh okay so we're gonna put these i think i'm ready to put most of these on so uh yeah we'll put the barrel on oh actually i think i should put the what well, whatever we'll uh we'll get there okay so i am just going to start adding waves but i think the back seagull okay so here's my seagull i mean the seagull we may modify them a little bit but i'm gonna put the the going to put the stand in uh the support in at least already because it's going to be hard to get that in there once the waves are on so now we'll put the waves so the waves just go on either side of the and for the stand of the seagull i'm just using one of my favorite transparent bar pieces i use these in a lot of stuff i actually ended up buying like a hundred of them like many years ago <laughs> because I use them so hot. every version of pursuit of flight uses four of them and I built quite a few versions of pursuit of flight in different themes so they come in handy when you want to support things high above the base uh, do you have the ship finished the ship is mostly finished the ship is kind of in pieces but uh, it's coming we'll finish that up next actually I think after we get the waves on We'll work on the ship. If I did all this, uh, as I've mentioned in many streams, if I actually did all this in real time, as I was actually designing everything, it would be a month long affair. Uh, Mr. Boris, can you say Boris is cool? Boris is cool. Who doesn't like Boris? Okay, here we go. Uh, uh, maybe it would be cool if you could make a sculpture from the game Hollow Knight. Just a thought. I'm not familiar with that game, but uh, I should write that down in my book. Uh, would you build other versions of the Crazy Walker, Queenie? Uh, probably not. Uh, now that I've actually like got it working and all the mechanism all figured out and everything, uh, you know, it, uh, it's time to move on to other cool things. Okay. So now we have, we have a wave mechanism and we have a seagull, seagull that goes up and down. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. The, uh, I guess go this way, it's easier. Looks like water, just like in the game. Uh, da, da, da. Do you like Technic more or Creator? Xavier, do you mean like System? Um, I mean, I like them both. Obviously, most of what I build is uh, a combination of the two. So you can't build what I build without either of them. Ooh, our Hamburg, do you have a special day when you reach the 1 million subs? I haven't thought about it much because I thought it would take me like still a couple years to hit a million. But with the explosion of the uh, shorts popularity, it might only be like six months or so before I hit a million, but who knows that could wane. So it's really hard to tell how long it'll take. Uh, and in Datsun, this is looking great. Thanks. Uh, yeah, it's coming along. Uh, okay. Oh, actually the other, the other seagull is actually a bit easier to get in because I can lift this side of the waves up. Oh, actually I forgot to put, uh, <laughs> you have to put the cam in for the other seagull. He's missing uh, He's missing a cam. I better do that. Uh, so Where is that cam? Actually, I need to steal the 
cam from my demo model. Uh, so basically, I just have this Technic axle with the cam, put it through a couple Technic bricks, and then the drive gear on the end. So that's how the cam works. And then he will just get slotted right in here. So that gear will mesh with the gear on that part of the drivetrain. And then we have, there we go, another cam, and we'll slot the... You go there. There. And I've definitely I've intentionally offset them a little bit. And that's easy to control just by kind of changing how the gear teeth mesh. Uh, so that they don't go up and down at the same time. Uh, okay, so I don't know which way did these go on. Now that I've got the pattern on, I gotta put them in the right way. Other, oh, that was definitely, definitely not the right way. <laughs> was it the right way? Oh my goodness! No, that was the right way. That goes there. Oh, this goes here. And then this one. Excellent. Did you consider making the seagull slot through wings? Are now? Yes, I did. I did think about it. Not for very long though, because at this scale, it's uh, yeah, it's just I couldn't think of any way to make it work using Technic pieces. I think you would have to well make them quite a bit bigger, and I think it would just ruin the scale of them. So yeah, I thought about it. Uh, Juan Pablo Cadenas, I'm not familiar with that axle piece. Nice. Yes, that axle piece is actually kind of handy because it prevents the things from sliding. It's got the little stopper in the middle. Here, I'll show you. I could have just used a, uh, I could have just used a four long axle. It would work as well. But because it's, the axle doesn't actually it's got a smooth section here, so if you put something on one end, it'll actually stop there. So it actually forces, it prevents, so let's say you have something there and it goes through a Technic thing. If you push something on this end, sometimes when you're assembling Technic things, like when you push something on one end of an axle, it'll actually push the axle through whatever's on the other end. And then it can interfere with other things that you've built, like on there. Uh, so in this way, it actually keeps that axle in place no matter how you push it laterally because, uh, yeah, it just can't go through whatever you have connected on the other end. Uh, anyway, so, yeah, they're kind of handy in that respect. Uh, KDR, YouTube should be funny and send you a golden play button made from Lego. Yeah, that would be pretty funny, but I want a shiny, fancy gold button like everybody else. Uh, <laughs> break shark technic Lego technic creations. I hope there are no sharks in the sea. Yes. Actually, I thought about I might build a version of this like non Wind Waker themed. I've, I've seen some wooden sculptures with like a boat and like dolphin fins going between the between the waves, which might be kind of cool to work on as well. Soxophone. Hey, JK, I've been watching your videos on and off for like three years, ever since the Sisyphus video, I think. The first, first time I actually make it onto a stream. That's awesome. Thanks for joining. Uh, popping in. Uh, this looks amazing. Thanks. Really appreciate it. I mean, I haven't only been streaming for like two months, so... Thanks for popping in. Uh, oh, Juan, thanks for the... Seems super useful. Thanks for the information. Yeah, explanation. The color saturation on the lower camera would make the build look so close to the game. The blue ocean pops. Yeah, yeah. This is a GoPro, so they definitely like by default saturate everything. Uh, yeah, and with the reflection of the light and everything, it looks uh, looks pretty nice. Uh, this camera is just like a Logitech webcam, so it's definitely very muted in terms of the colors. 
Uh, what's the biggest model you've ever built? When it's about parts. The biggest model I've ever built, our Hamburg, uh, was an architecture building, actually. A completely static model. It was a recreation of the one of the buildings on the campus of University of Waterloo, which is where I went to school. And uh, it's long. I mean, I built it probably 15 years ago. It's long since been taken apart. Uh, it was pretty big. It was probably like a meter by a meter square, maybe. Uh, maybe not quite that big, but pretty big. Uh, what's your opinion on Bionicle sets, Dr. Gorilla? I love me some Bionicle sets. I love the Bionicle sets when they were out. I mean, I don't really build with Bionicle style pieces. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I thought it was super cool. If I was a kid when the Bionicle sets came out, man, I would have been all over them. Uh, okay, hold on. I'm going to, like, pop back into the chat a little bit. Do you know the game Gris? It's really great. I think the model... A model would be amazing, too. No, I don't, I'm not familiar with that game, either. Mr. Prongles, thanks for popping in again. Uh, Queenie, are you collecting boxes from sets, either? No, most of the boxes I just throw out. Mostly interested in the pieces. Uh, da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. How many Lego sets have you made? Like, official Lego sets? I mean, I've had I've been involved with two idea sets, one with Grant Davis, um, but obviously we didn't really design those sets. We just came up with the idea. They were completely redesigned. I guess the Bricklink set was my design, which is technically a Lego set, I guess. That's a Cata set. It's pretty awesome if you don't mind clone bricks. Uh, as far as models, I've designed probably like hundreds of custom models myself. Uh, yes, I am making instructions for this. There might be a while before. I mean, we'll see if I make any changes to this as we build it. Okay, on to the boat. Uh, how's the build? Ecstatic East then. Thanks for popping back in, man. Good to see you again. Um, yeah, so we're going to build a boat. Do we have a reference for the boat? Obviously, I've kind of mostly designed this boat already. Um, but uh, da, 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 da. there's my video of the source material. Well, sort of secondary source material. Here's a boat. Boat boat. The king of lions. I believe that's what the boat is. Uh, yeah, so it's a pretty cool boat. Um... So here I have my boat. I made it in dark red because I think that mostly matches the the color of the boat. It's kind of brownish, reddish brown. So I think reddish brown would probably have worked as well. But uh, uh, I decided to go with dark red just because, uh, yeah, I think it looks a little bit better. Oh, well, here we go. Jumping around too much. Okay. Anyway, I think it looks quite good in dark red. Uh, I think, I don't know if there was a reason I couldn't do it in reddish brown. There might be some slopes that aren't available. I'm not sure. But uh, I think dark red looks good. I mean, he is the king of red lines. Oh, king of red lines. Yeah, so we'll make him red. Uh, how painful 1 to 10 was it running down the Lego parse flooded stairs in the Howl video? <laughs> Oh man, blast from the past. Actually, it wasn't painful at all. It wasn't that painful. I mean, it wasn't like pleasant, but uh, it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Uh, so on a scale of one to 10, I mean, it was probably only like a two or a three, to be honest. Uh, maybe like a four. Uh, Jack Frost, I bought like four kilos of Bionicles just because it was super cheap. Oh, doing something like a 2D art with it. Some torsos are useful for Technic. Yeah. I mean, I have all the... Bion I still have all the pieces. They're in like a bin somewhere. And some of the pieces are kind of cool for detailing. But there's a lot of stuff that you just never use. Um... Oh, yeah. Obviously, are you going to make the head of the line on the boat? Okay, so, yeah. I'm going to make the head of the line on the boat. Okay, so we're going to... Oh, here's the head of the line. I had prototyped the head of the line already. Here's the head of the line. Okay. So I'm using bananas for his horns. 
some good bananas. He's got some crazy like white beardy things on his sides. So I'm going with that. I think it looks pretty good. He's got like golden eyes. So I just have a like a bar through a bar through a plate with a hole in it for the eyeballs. Um, yeah, so I think uh, it turned out pretty nice. Mm, what, Dr. Gorilla, what made you want to start your YouTube channel? Hmm, great question. Actually, the YouTube channel, and I was going to do a 10 year anniversary video, and I still might at some point. It was actually 10 years ago, exactly on April 16th, that I posted my maze. That's the first Lego video I posted on my YouTube channel. I had some old videos on it at some point uh, before that, that I have, they're still up there, but they're unlisted. Uh, but anyway, this was the first model I posted on the YouTube. And, uh, so the reason I posted it is because mostly I just wanted to show people how it worked. Like I've been building my own models for 10 years or so. And uh, this was like the first one that needed a really good, like in order to see how it worked, you really needed to like watch a video. So that's why I made a video for it. And, uh, Back then, there was no, like, uh, like, I didn't want to start a YouTube channel. I just wanted a place to host my videos to show people how they worked. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so, yeah. That's why I started. And then over the next, like, couple years or so, I posted another bunch of videos on there. Basically, any time I made a model that moved, I just, you know, thought it would be... Thought it would be cool to show people how the models worked and YouTube was pretty much the only or best place to put it. Before then, I would post videos, you know, some of you may not be old enough to remember the days before YouTube, but, you know, before YouTube, uh, you kind of just had to post your videos on your own website and stuff, and that's what I did. I would just post host videos myself. Um, but YouTube makes it super convenient to... Uh, to do that. Whoops. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Are you going to make the head of the line? Yeah, yeah. Do you prefer Tiger, Technic or Normal Bricks? Somebody already asked me that. Leon? Uh, I like them both. Uh, GoPro actually accentuates the variations in the red pieces. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah, I'm definitely using, again, super annoying. Uh, darkish red or dark red has, there's like a, very like a uh, dull version of it and there's kind of like a milky version of it and uh yeah it's like pretty annoying if you actually want uh to make the model uh consistent uh xavier who's more skilled tiago or you oh man i mean i don't know he's probably a better artist than i am for sure <laughs> actually no doubt about it um so yeah we'll give that to him uh how many pieces did you break doing that? Uh, doing what? Doing this? I actually already broke a piece. Super annoying. I just noticed. One of these tiles got cracked. Yeah. I think I already threw it in the bin. But, uh, yeah, anyway. Sometimes, uh, I just don't like... Sometimes the Lego disappoints me. I think seagulls are too twitchy. Yeah, could be. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, I'm catching up to the chat here. Obviously, I got away. I'm just going to skip over some of it because... Uh, sorry if I missed anything. <laughs> if you had to separate the Lego pieces in 30 different categories, how would you organize them? Very specific question. Do you just happen to have 30 uh, containers? I would put basic bricks in one, basic plates in one, tiles in one. I'd probably split out the tiles into like uh, basic tiles and uh, like modified tiles. Plates as well, I'd split from basic plates and modified plates. Bricks as well, basic bricks, modified bricks. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. I think it uh, kind of... Uh, it's pretty easy to come up with uh, like good categories. Okay, so I got to put this guy back together. So... Uh, Basically, it just is, this is just, uh, you know, in the heavily snotted thing. I've got brackets on the sides so I can build the, add some tiles and curved slopes onto the sides to get the rounded. Uh, so basically just a combination of snot pieces and brackets to get studs facing in every direction. I've got studs facing outside on either side, stud facing front in the front, studs facing to the back in the back. And that way we can just cover this thing in uh, in tiles and curved slopes. It's a pretty standard like build technique these days. Uh, to get things to look good. Mm -mm -mm. I'm just using a combination of, you know, cheese slopes, regular slopes, curved slopes, basically all the slopes to give a nice, so now we got a nice like boat profile. And again, we get uh, some regular cheese slopes in here. Get a little rudder on the back. And he gets a controller for the rudder. And then the head sticks on the front. So we got a little boat boat. A little boat. Looks like a pretty nice boat. Hmm. How much you use in brick separator, Queenie? Yeah, I use brick separators all the time. They're pretty awesome. Oh, Papai Film. Sorry if I mispronounced your name. Thank you, Super Sticker. That's pretty cute. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Bodie McBoatface. Yeah, exactly. This is a Bodie, Bodie McBoatface or something. Uh, da -da -da. Uh, gonna go for lunch. You're on your own. Okay. Uh, sorry. Oh, I mean, you guys can leave. That's fine. Uh, don't, definitely don't feel compelled to stick around. What are we at here? Oh, an hour and 50 minutes. We're getting there. Uh, okay. So the boat obviously needs a sail. Hopefully it won't be too much longer, but, uh, Jack Frost. Oh yeah. If you need a mod for when nobody's else, I'd be more than happy to. Grant can vouch for you. Oh, he can, can he? Uh, okay, Jack, you be a moderator. Look at that. Easy as pie. Don't make me regret my decision. Um, would a one by one double curved slope work better for the nose? Oh, instead of the cheese slopes. Yeah, uh, I'm actually using, oh, you mean like one by two for like, where am I? Where am I? <sighs> yeah, for for this section, yeah, I mean, maybe. I have a couple cheese slopes here, uh, but uh, I tried a few different things, but this was ended up being kind of the one that I thought looked the best, but that's not necessarily the case. Um, yeah. We can try some more things, maybe. Uh, you kind of just lose the detail anyway. Uh, so I'm sure it would look equally as good if I just had like a regular one by two curve slope there, or even a one by four curve slope across the entire thing. There's probably multiple ways you could do it and still look good. Uh, Francois Collardi, hey, first time here. Hello from France, hey, how's it going? Uh, you should make more alternate Builds for Lego set, judging by your skill, you could make something super cool, Dr. Gorilla. Yeah, I mean, I've obviously have done that in the past many times, but I've actually been, uh, I guess I have only so much time in the day. So uh, 
there's only so much I can do. And uh, I've been working on a lot of like of my own uh, custom models, obviously, recently. Okay, so we're gonna need a sail, and uh, we are going to need to decorate this sail with the little snake pattern thing. Oh yeah, I also wanted to. I also wanted to carry on this like white trim. I guess the gunwales are white on this boat. So, which the brackets do a nice job of getting this like white line uh, coming all the way along the sides. But I'm using these cattle horns to kind of carry that white line into a curve up to the front, which kind of looks cool, I thought. Uh, uh, okay, I got way behind the chat again. Oh, too many people! Uh, okay, sail, yeah. Sail. Oh, I think he made the nose. Oh, the nose of the dragon. Oh, the nose of the dragon. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, I mean... Uh, there's probably some other ways to do this nose of the dragon. I guess I have two studs to work with there. So I could make it like... Maybe two yellow. Two yellow tiles or quarter round tiles maybe so that it's more rounded. That doesn't really look that great. I can't remember what PC actually suggested I use. Um, we ever write a book about your way and your models? Ah, R. Hamburg, no. Writing a book sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> My strengths are definitely in making Lego models and not writing. So I think I'm just going to stick with that. And uh, <laughs> yeah. Play your strengths, my friend. This is a good lesson in life. Uh, okay, we need to make a sail here. Obviously, there's a pattern on the sail. Uh, no, it's not. Uh, can't see it that way. Oh, and this one. And I noticed there's like two different colors of the sail. I guess this is like the regular sail, and this is like the swift sail, I think they call it or something. Um, but uh, this green color in the standard sail is actually pretty like unique. Lego doesn't really have it. I mean, I think they do, but definitely not in like all the all the pieces I need. So I decided to go with red because uh, basically Lego has a variety of these quarter round uh, tiles in red, which make it, uh, you know, which are kind of necessary to actually get all these curved curved shapes in the sail. So it's basically like a, I actually don't know what it's supposed to be, a snake or something, or just some kind of symbol. But obviously we can't put too much detail into it because we, again, we're limited by Lego, but uh, I think this design looks pretty nice. A little sail. Nathaniel Roseless, if you were to build the largest Lego set, what would you build? I'm actually not that into large sets, to be honest. I like small models. I think it's uh, it's really cool. You can like you can definitely achieve a lot of interesting motion and movement, and even a, a lot of interesting detail in small models. And uh, I really have no interest in large sets, so I probably wouldn't build any large sets. Uh, the grand finale should be you testing if the boat will float. I can already tell you the answer to that one. The answer is no. The boat will not float. Dr. Grill, what is your favorite line of Lego sets? Crater 3-in-1 is my favorite. Okay, so in theory, if I just put this boat on here, the boat will definitely float on this thing. Yeah, that's not bad. Boat will float. But I think I might need to anchor it somehow. Because, uh, oh yeah, it's pretty nice. Oh, it definitely moves around a little bit. But uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, where Link at? Oh yeah, we need to add Link to him. We need to add Link to the boat. First, we're going to make the boat stay in place a little bit. So, obviously the boat can just slide around all willy-nilly. 
actually left a channel under the boat of like open space. And uh, so actually I figured, I think I'll just put, uh, so these like ice cream cone swirl pieces, basically I'm just gonna add a couple onto my water. Not really sure where, but let's say I just like add a couple here and here. Oh, I just lost that one. That's one reason to leave the bottom of the thing open so you can get pieces you lose out of it. So in theory, those can constrain the boat a little bit. Are they in a good spot? Actually, I think I need to widen them up. Now they're too wide, I think. Oh yeah, that's too wide. Uh, it looks fantastic on the water. Thanks. Yeah, looks pretty good. Okay. Again, I don't really need it to be like completely fixed to the water. Well, actually, I noticed this like inverted slope I have at the bottom. I might have to replace that piece. It actually sticks out a bit underneath the bottom and it kind of rides up on the studs. I think it's better. I'll probably replace that at some point. Okay. Uh, so those ice cream cones should, or swirl things. Oh yeah. They'll help keep it uh, at least a bit anchored into the water. Which is cool. Obviously you can't like, since it's not completely attached, you won't be able to lift this model up and carry it around the boat will just fall over. But, uh, oh, maybe some pink cones instead. Yeah, pink cones might work. <laughs> they might be a bit tall though, actually. They might, I might have to increase the uh, size of that slot in the bottom of the boat. Um, But here we go. Uh, I think making Lego sales is the hardest thing I've tried to do while building. Oh, do you think? Uh, uh, do you think you will make a trial, or do you already have a vid on making the sale? No. Uh, oh, he already fell off. Yeah, maybe I have to improve those ice cream swirls. Uh, I did not make it a tutorial on making the boat or making the sail. Uh, there's no video. Uh, probably won't make a video on that. Uh, yeah, but I'll probably make instructions for this. So if you want to see how that sail looks, eventually you'll be able to. I mean, it's actually pretty straightforward. It's uh, just some, uh, yeah, wedge plates. It's two plates thick, basically. And uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. Okay, we need Mojar. Okay, first we need Link. Um, and actually there should be like something on this barrel, I think, but I actually don't know what it, what it's, what they're supposed to be, but uh, I guess I'll worry about that later. Uh, so Link in, uh, Okay, what's going on here? Okay, Link in this game has kind of crazy anime eyes. Uh, so I was looking through all my... Looking through all my minifig heads and... Uh, does this thing autofocus? I have no idea. This is like an old minifig head from uh, Exoforce, which was uh, kind of an old line, but I had it sticking around. But I think it's like probably the closest kind of face, I don't think, I don't know if autofocus is on for any of these things. Do you have an autofocus? Anyway, you get the idea. He's got like big eyes. I think it's an appropriate uh, head for Link. Uh, yeah, so Exoforce, I tried to find a green tunic of some sort, but Lego is very stingy on green tunics apparently. There's actually not many, I actually bought a few Actually, I don't even know where they are now. I brought some like decorated tunics. The new blacksmith uh, set has one. But 
it's a female though, so it's not really appropriate. But uh, for some reason, I lost it. I can't find it right now. But in the end, I just thought I'd just go with a plain uh, green torso. Just because, again, if other people are building this, they can pick their own green torsos or if they just want to buy a regular green torso, that's it. And then for legs, again, there's not a lot of green legs with... Like Link has green... Well, he's got a green tunic and he's got white legs. Uh, you can't really see this, but he's got like a belt... And then the tunic goes under the belt, and then he's got he's got white round legs. So in order to get all that to to actually work, I thought I'd just build legs for him. So I've got two one by one rounds, a green plate for the tunic under the belt, and then a one by two rounded plate for the belt, which I think looks okay. And then uh, for he's got like brown boots, I think. Oh, they're already in the boat. So I think those would be good for feet. And then I guess he's an elf of some sort. So I just gave him an elf hat. <laughs> Actually tried with uh, like blonde hair, but it just doesn't, doesn't quite look as good. As people posted in my little preview, he just looks like a knockoff Lloyd, which is not the look I'm going for. And I tried some yellow hair too, and the yellow hair looks terrible because his uh, minifig head is yellow. So I think I'm just going with the elf cap. I think that looks like pretty decent as far as the link goes. Uh, really wish we could get an Exo Force reboot, Jack Frost. Yeah, yeah, they were pretty cool sets. I think I bought. Well, I didn't buy all of them, but I bought most of them. Could you build some upgrades to the LEGO Austin Martin DB5? Well, I don't have it. Um, don't really have any interest in cars, so... I'm going to go with no for that one. Uh, slash me. All right, got to go now. Keep having fun. Oh, thanks, man. Uh, thanks for joining. It's awesome. Thanks for being here. Uh, oh, our Hamburg ordered the LEGO Creator Lion now. And built the Mecha Chicken. The Mecha Chicken's pretty fun, yeah. Uh... Uh, da, da, da. The boat looks sick. The boat does look pretty cool. I mean, the mast doesn't stay on very well. It's only a one stud connection. It's pretty heavy, but it's not really much I can do about that, unfortunately. Okay, so we have Link. We have a boat. Uh, we have some seagulls. I think... Uh, this is... Uh, I, is there anything else I'm missing? Oh, we have a barrel. Yeah, so in theory, there's like... Uh, Link's got to like jump over the barrel and get uh, collect things. Uh, instead of a 1x2 first boots, use two 1x1s. Yeah, there actually are two 1x1s there. <laughs> you just can't... It just looks like one plate. Um, so in theory, there's like some kind of green gems or something. That's a bit big, but... Uh, 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 yeah, oh, thanks for the offer, who's ever talking about mods. Yeah, I mean, I don't need a ton of mods, but, uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, wow, wait, it moves? Uh, yeah, obviously it moves. What channel do you think you're on? Uh, so yeah, Link is, as you can imagine... Sailing along the ocean, jumping over barrels. Obviously, that's something that they do. And then the seagulls go up and down, which is pretty nice. Uh, yeah, I think that's... Uh... Enthusiastic Banana. Okay, I'm back just for a few minutes. Oh, Enthusiastic Banana. Well, you're here. I think we're pretty much done. Um, I noticed the seagull in the back catches every once in a while on something. So I might have to tweak how it's mounted at some point but I think that's like pretty much it um, so if we can compare mm -mm -mm -mm, who's asking the same questions uh, well how about a shield piece for their oh the rupees yeah I don't know what colors are available though yeah actually I thought about that as well that's a really good uh, 
Like you mean these? Do you mean these ones? Uh, yeah, I think these actually are kind of cool. Um, I couldn't uh, get a good way to mount them though. They come in, uh, I mean, they come in like this trans greenish color, but I don't know if they come in this color undecorated. I'll have to look for that. Um, but in order to mount them, they're supposed to be floating above the barrel. So sadly, like there's no clip piece that comes in trans. So that's a bit sad. I guess I could use a trans. I had a trans headlight brick, which is one thing I tried. Um, theory, you could like, well, let's try it out. Is the hat, is that the nose of Statue of Liberty? Yeah, pretty much. Or the face of the Statue of Liberty, yeah. Obviously, I changed the face of my Statue of Liberty. So I have that available. Uh, da, da, da. Can you connect the motor to it? Yes, that's one thing I am going to try. Yeah, so in theory, you can make like a little rupee thing. But yeah, I haven't decided exactly what to put here. If anything, obviously <laughs> the Nexonite shield <laughs> pattern is not really appropriate, <laughs> but we'll see. Uh, the transparent green one looks cool with the symbol. Maybe that could be Link's shield. Oh yeah, it could be, yeah. In theory, Link is uh, wearing a shield on his back, so yeah. Uh, for the sides, use transparent panels to close it all up and still see the wave generator. Yeah, but why would I add transparent panels if uh, you can still see through them anyway? Uh, oh, splashes by the front of the boat would look even better. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, we should... Uh, I should try and add some of those. That's a good uh, thought. I better write that down because... Uh, actually, I'll remember that. Um, John Volcatura... Amazing work. Have you considered placing him a bit more oh, of a seated position? Maybe he will be able to grab the tiller. Also wondering why you did not go with flesh color for his hands and face. Well, because I really wanted to use, get the eyeballs right. So sadly, that's the only, it's got to be yellow basically to use the face I wanted. Sitting, yeah, except I could try and make him sit. He is standing when he's operating the boat. So maybe I can just raise the tiller up a bit so he can actually hold on to it. Uh, uh, the time of next one nights, good times, yeah. Okay, so motorizing it, yeah. So yeah, let's stick a motor in here so we can actually just get it running a little bit. So I'm gonna take some Pals off, and then I'll get a motor. Get myself a motor. The nice thing about the stand being quite large is that there's enough room. There's definitely, definitely enough room to fit a motor and a battery box in there. So I can just use regular Lego components. Uh, so in theory, I'll just stick this motor in to mesh with that gear. I need to lift it up a little bit. And I need to... Offset it by, so I think I'll need a jumper plate, a couple jumper plates. Couple jumper plates. I might have to take this piece out. It's a little tight in here. He just ignored me. What did you ask? Will you do something for Valentine's Day? Isn't Valentine's Day like a year from now again? Uh, Valentine's Day. So yeah, no, I have no plans to do anything for <laughs> Valentine's Day in 2023. Uh,
Team Vitamin. Hello, hello. Is the live stream, it's over? Queen, well, I mean, I'm just gonna add a motor to this, but uh, I've pretty much done all that uh, I wanna do. I may still make some improvements. Some people suggested adding waves coming out the front of the boat, which is a great idea. I need a drive gear. Uh, all right, I'm heading out again. Enthusiastic banana. Cool. Thanks for joining. Stream is still running. Yeah, it is still running. Nope, still live. Okay. Uh, motor. Motor action. Oh, sound dampening is a different engineering problem, yeah. I mean, Grant just posted a video about dampening the sound of Lego motors, and I think the takeaway is that you need a lot of... You basically need to house it in an enormous housing of some sort. Uh, so, yeah. Can you make a Zader, Zardes made model? I don't know what that is, but uh, maybe. Okay. Here we have a motor. We have a battery box. I'm just gonna stick the battery box underneath. Actually, no. Obviously the battery box could be stuck underneath, but then it's gonna be a pain in the butt to turn it on. So, uh, lime green arms would be more accurate, SJB. Yeah. Yeah, or sand green or lime green. Oh, that's a bit, that's a bit rammy. Okay, we have motorization. Put the water back on. Yeah, sand green arms I think would be good, or lime green. Um, I couldn't find any easily in my collection, but I will probably try and find some and uh, swap them out. Uh, do you sell shirts? Our Hamburg. Uh, kind of. I, not really. I do have a store. I haven't linked it anywhere though, so there's only one shirt in there. <laughs> Eventually I'll do all that, but uh, I guess at the moment not really. Uh, how long does it take to make these models? I mean, I've been working on this one for probably a month. Two months? Oh man, maybe two months. I mean, technically, from the first prototype, it's been like three years, so. Uh, but yeah, I think most of it was probably done in like a week or so, but uh, then I have to wait for pieces and such. Okay, here we go. Link sailing the seas on his quest for rupees. Uh, joined by seagulls. I have a question. So I was wondering if you had an engineering background. Yes, I do because of your builds. Well, we're just a Lego designer back then before you started YouTube. I was never a Lego designer, but uh, flattered you would think so. Um, I mean, I was uh, fascinated with uh, mechanics in my childhood. I love the Technic, Lego Technic sets, so... That carried, kind of carried through all the way to now. Uh, Jack Frost looks fantastic, thanks. Do you have instructions for the mower man? Yes, they are on my website, I believe. <coughs> Daniel Sens, this should be in a Lego Ideas project. Yeah, could be. I won't be posting it though. Um, are you allowed on Lego Masters or would that be unfair to the other competitors? <laughs> Oh man, I would do terrible on LEGO Masters. I build way too slowly. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, obviously most LEGO builders at this point have probably been approached to do it. Uh, so yeah, I have no interest in doing that. Mm -mm -mm. Brick Logic. Uh, hello, thanks for making this great video. Cheers, thanks. Uh, yeah, so this is all pretty much done. 
Obviously, I'm still not really sure what to do for these rupees, I guess, what they're called. Um, this actually looks pretty good, the trans thing, but I don't know if it comes unprinted. It should really be unprinted. Um, and maybe some waves in the front, actually. I think in the... Uh, during gameplay, there's like waves coming off the front of the boat. So I think maybe something like these horns would actually be really cool to just have like mounted in the front to make it look like the waves are coming out. Um, no. Why do I have a call? Don't bug me. Um, Jack Frost, I was approached for Lego Masters and had to turn it down too. Uh -huh. Can't build nearly fast enough. Yeah. I mean, I doubt I would uh, be interesting enough to actually make it through the, uh, you know, casting process anyway but uh cheese wedges yeah maybe actually i think these would look super cool what do you think yes no no cheese wedges uh or add some white cheese slopes around the boat yeah i could do that i'll try both of those uh at some point uh please do the dab <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, anyway, thanks for everybody for joining. I think uh, we're pretty much done here. Uh, had a great time chatting with some people. Sorry if I ignored some people. Uh, There's a lot to kind of keep track of. And uh, yeah, uh, thanks to the moderators for sticking around. I guess most of them already left, but thanks to Jack Frost for being a new moderator. moderator. We get a dab, dab for people that wanted to dab because apparently that's what we do again these days. Uh, is this going to stay on YouTube? Yeah, probably. I've been thinking of like removing some of the live streams, but it'll be up for a while. So if anybody wants to flip through and see kind of how it made, how it was made, then that's great. Um, okay, thanks for everybody for joining. As always, thanks for watching. Keep on building. I'll see you in the next one. And I'm not really ready to turn this off yet, so I'm just gonna keep talking. Okay, here we go. Hope everybody has a great day.